Okay, grade 11s. This is page 75 of your blue book if you're in class with me. And if you're in Mr. DeVries' class and are just reviewing quadratics for whatever reason, this would be the first page of that big file that is on our Google Classroom. Alrighty. Okay, so let us begin with quadratic functions and equations. Well, first of all, I want to remind you um, of what functions means. All this year, most of the time, and through most of your math career, you've been writing things like this. With y and x. And then we ask you to put it on a graph. Plus 7, slope of 1, and we make you draw that. X's and Y's. Functions, instead of Y, we write that. And this is your Y value. So if you're going to draw this, you can choose the x value, whatever you want to make it. So if I say I want to make x 0, then we write this this way. The f of 0, that x has become a 0, equals x is 0, 0 plus 7. So the f of x is 7. x is the 0 value on the graph. f of x is my output. It is 7, so that is my y value. Right there would be 0, 7. And then obviously 1, 8, 2, 9, and so on and so on and so on. So that is review of what a function is. The next thing I want to talk about are equations. So far this year, in my class, we have been dealing with things like this. And the only thing you could do with that is factor it to simplify it. And of course, you would factor it the same way you factor everything. You need numbers that multiply to 12 and add to 7, which would get me x plus 3 and x plus 4. This is an expression. There's no answer. Because there's no equal sign. All right, so let me give you a more elementary example. I'll use this again, x plus 7. What's the answer? You can't tell me because you don't know. If I add another, an equal sign and another value, then you can tell me the answer. This we can solve. All right, so let's take this, what we've been dealing with, x squared plus 7x plus 12, and make it equal something. Now we could find an answer. And that answer is pretty easy to find. We know what to do with an expression like that. We would factor it, which we've already done, x plus 3 and x plus 4. And now it equals 0. So this we can now solve. Okay. Now I'm going to be using some terminology here. I'm going to highlight it, quadratic. The equations that we will be dealing with all look like this. That is a quadratic equation because it's got a squared term. This is called the quadratic term. Or a. This is called the linear term, which is b. And this is the constant, which equals c when we write it out like this. This is called general form because it applies to everything. 
you need to know these words because I, of course, will be referring to them throughout the rest of the lessons. So there are lots of ways to solve quadratic equations. This is the easiest one. It is solving by factorization. So let's do that. We're going to keep the same example going. x squared plus 7x plus 12 equals 0. So there's my A, B, and C. So when I see this and I can factor it, I will do so, as you've already seen, x plus 3 and x plus 4 equals 0. Now all of you should notice that this, these brackets, group this together as a factor, factor 1. This is factor 2. Now you can see what math is happening right there. It's multiply. This factor and this factor multiply together to make 0. So let's put that into regular terms. Whatever this factor is, all right, let's call it q times whatever this factor is, let's call it p equals 0. If this is true, then q must equal 0 or p must equal 0. So q would equal 0 or p would equal 0. Well, right here you see two factors. So if this is true, x plus 3 would have to equal 0, or x plus 4 would have to equal 0. So let's do that. Minus 3, minus 3, or you move the 3 over, whatever you're more comfortable with. x equals negative 3, or negative 4. Then you can check it. What is negative 3 plus 3? 0. What is negative 3 plus 4? 1. 0 times 1 is 0. So this answer is good, just like in rational or radical equations that my class has just finished. Negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 1 times 0 is 0. So that answer works as well. So you can all see that once we are here, you can see that the answers are right there, except they have the opposite sign. So I'm going to write one out here, and I'm going to let you try it. x squared minus 8x minus... 20 equals 0. You try that. I'm going to pause for a moment. Okay, we're back. If you need longer, just pause. So we're going to factor this. We need to multiply to negative 20 and add to negative 8. So we know it is x minus 10 and x plus 2 would equal 0. Now, x minus 10 would have to equal 0, so x would have to equal 10, or x plus 2 would have to equal 0, so x would have to equal negative 2. And then we're done. Now, this can get more difficult, of course, as it always does. You'll notice that in both of my examples, our a value has been 1 both times. That's the easiest kind of factoring. Everyone's good at that. What happens if it's not? So now we've got a number there. Now, I know that Mr. DeVries teaches a different way to factor these, and I know that I've taught you, my class, four different ways to factor it. Personally, for me, when I'm doing these, the best one I find is slide and divide. So I need to multiply to 12 and add to 7. 
And what is it? It is, of course, um, 3 and 4. So I have x plus 3 over 2 and x plus 4 over 2. And of course, I would simplify that to x plus 3 over 2 and x plus 2. Now, normally, when I do this kind of factoring, I slide this number up to the front. But I'm not going to do that here because you notice that this looks exactly like this and like this. So we know our answers are right there just with the other sign. So x would equal negative 3 halves and negative 2. And I hope everybody's cool with that. I'm going to take a small pause because I have just gotten some yogurt and granola. And then I will be right back. Okay. So here we go. This one looks perfectly normal, right? x squared minus 5x minus 14 equals 0. Multiply to negative 14. Add to negative 5. And it is, of course, 2 minus 7. x plus 2. x minus 7 equals 0. So x equals negative 2 and positive 7. And we're done. That's how easy it is. What's different here? Well, we got a 3. I'll change colors. We got a 3x squared plus 2x minus 5 equals 0. And again, you're going to factor this any way you're comfortable. I want to multiply to negative 15 and add to 2. So I know that is x plus 5 over 3 and x minus 3 over 3. I cancel that to get 1 and I know that x has to be negative 5 thirds and positive 1. And lastly, c for x squared plus 4 x plus 1 equals 0 multiply to 4 Add to 4, I know it's 2 and 2. x plus 2 over 4, x plus 2 over 4, cancel, cancel. 1 half, 1 half, so x has to equal negative 1 half. Notice in this case, I only get one answer. That's okay. So there's my three answers. So, A, B, C, E, and F are all pretty normal. They're exactly like what we've done already five times. So I'm going to leave you to do those. I am going to have a look at D, though. Now, D is the difference of squares, isn't it? So D is x plus 5, x minus 5 equals 0. So nothing changes. x equals negative 5 and positive 5. And we like to write this as plus or minus 5. All the rest of those you should be able to do. So I'm not going to do them right now. That will be your work. These are all the ones with the coefficient at the front. So I'm going to do A, B, and C, and then I'm going to get you to do D, E, and F. And I will show you the right answers again tomorrow.
Well, not tomorrow, on the next video. Obviously, I won't work through it. I'll just show you the right answers. If you have questions about it, that's what we use our Google meeting for tomorrow. That becomes one half, so x is going to be one half and negative eight fifths. Oh. Guys, oh, I did that wrong. I just noticed. Sorry about that. Um, uh, sorry, it is 8 and minus 3. So it is x plus 8 over 6. And x minus, minus 3 over 6, which I simplify to 1 half and four thirds. So x plus four thirds, x minus one half. So my answer is negative four thirds and positive one half. B, five c squared plus six c minus eight equals zero. Multiply to negative 40, add to six. I know it is 10 minus 4, x plus 10 over 5, x minus 4 over 5. Cancel that to 2. <coughs> that doesn't simplify. Sorry, it's a C. So C plus 2, C minus 4 fifths. So C equals negative 2 and positive 4 fifths. And C, 2H squared minus 3H minus 5 equals 0. Multiply to negative 10, add to negative 3. 2 minus 5, X plus 2 over 2, X minus 5 over 2. X equals, cancel that for 1, negative 1 and positive 5 halves. So you try D, E, and F on your own. You can try it now and wait, or you can uh, do them later, whatever works for you. Now, let's have a look at page 77 here. Please notice that these are written differently, aren't they? You will notice that A has a quadratic term, a linear term, and two constants. So we have to remember this is our general form. We have to make this look like this. So you know how to do that. We just got to get everything to the same side. 8x squared minus 5 equals 10x minus 2. Just move everything over. 8x squared minus 10x. Bring that over and bring that over. So that becomes plus 2. So this becomes minus 3. And all that equals nothing because we moved everything away. Now that looks exactly like all of these, and we can just factor it normally. So I got to multiply to negative 24, 
I got to add to negative 10. We know that that is 2 minus 12. So that is x plus 2. x minus 12 over 8, which we simplify to 3 over... Sorry, 12 over 8, 2, 4 goes into that, 3 over 3 over 2. Make sure I did that one right. 2 and negative 12. So it's x plus 2 over 8 and x minus 12 over 8. That becomes 1 fourth and that becomes 3 halves. x plus 1 fourth, x minus 3 halves. So x equals negative 1 fourth and positive 3 halves. Let's have a look at B. This does not look like this. So like I've been saying all the way along, we cannot forget all our old math. So if we were in grade 10 and we just had that, what would you do? Well, you would distribute it equals. Now what would you do if you just had that? Well, you distribute it, 4x minus 8. And now that looks exactly like that. So we just move everything to make it pretty. x squared, because we want our x positive whenever we can, minus 4x, and then we bring that 8 over, plus Oh, sorry, I forgot the 10x there. x squared, uh, 10 minus 4, 6x plus 8 equals 0, because I left nothing over here. Now, that's easy to factor. Multiply to 8, add to 6, it's 4 and 2, x plus 4, x plus 2 equals 0, x equals negative 4, and negative 2. So, I don't want to do A and B, or C and D, because they're pretty much the same as what we did up there. So I'm going to leave those for you to try. Actually, I lie. I'm going to pause right now and let you try all of those. And then uh, I'm going to do the answers. All right. So A, get everything on the same side. X squared, bring that over. Plus X, bring that over. Minus 20 equals 0. And then you can factor that. I'm going to leave it that way. B. Negative n squared. I want that over here. So it's positive n squared. Oops. And there's a 2 there. Sorry. Plus n squared. Then I want to bring the 3 over. Minus 3n. And I bring the 4 over. Plus 4. So I get... 3n squared plus 8n my plus 4 equals 0. Then you would factor that and solve it. C. I'm going to have 3z squared plus 12z equals negative z squared minus 9. Move everything to the same side. 4z squared plus 12z plus 9 equals 0. Factor that. And then d. 
to a squared minus 25 equals 21a, because I put them together, 2a squared minus 50 equals 21a. Sorry, I'll keep that green, everyone. 2a squared minus 50 equals 21. 2a squared minus 21a minus 50 equals 0. And then that was a, b, c, d, e. x plus 5 equals 36 over x. Now, this is one that's weird, so I want to work through that a little more with you. What bothers us there? All of you right now are yelling, fractions! Fractions scare us. How do I get rid of divided by x? A bunch of you are yelling, times by x. If I do something to the right, what do I do to the left? Same thing. And now I have x squared plus 5x equals 36, because that cancels. x squared plus 5x minus 36 equals 0. And f, obviously, the exact same thing. 2x minus 1 equals x plus 1 over 2x. What bothers us? The 2x. Cancel, cancel. x plus 1. 2x, 4x squared minus 2x, 4x squared minus 3x minus 1 equals 0. And then you would factor that. I'm not going to do the factoring with you. You can do that. And then I'll put up the right answers. And the last question for today, page 78. I will set it up with you, and then I'm going to leave it alone. So, two perpendicular sides of a right angle triangle have those lengths. The perpendicular sides are that. So there's my triangle. I've got a green side, a pink side, and a yellow side. Which are the perpendicular sides? They are the green and the pink. So that is x plus 2. That is 5x minus 3. And the yellow is the hypotenuse. That is 4x plus 1. I want you to find x. Well, what math do we know works with a right angle triangle? All of you right now are yelling, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Or hopefully you're yelling Pythagoras or the Pythagorean theorem. Where are the A's and B's and C's? Well, there's A, there's B, there's C. And what do we know? X plus 2 squared is A plus 5X minus 3 squared is B equals 4X plus 1 squared is c. Now you know what to do with that. 1. Expand. 2. Collect like terms. 3. Factor for the answer. Now, listen, please. I've left you a bunch of work to do on here. Do it. You'll see the right answers on Wednesday. But if you think you get it, on our Google Classroom, there is a quiz. It is on this stuff. It's like five or six multiple choice questions. If you think you've got it, Without doing all the practice, just do that quiz. I'm going to do one of those little multiple choice quizzes for every lesson. Okay? 
I hope to see some of you tomorrow in our Google Hangout. Remember, tomorrow, Tuesday, rate 11s, 3.15. Check your Learn34 account if you want. Talk to you Wednesday.